you know, this is so exciting that we got to record this. So I'm, do you mind? I'm going to publish this for the world to to get downloaded with state-of-art WebGL information. Are you okay with that? Uh, yeah. So let's do it. Well, so I will send you a link of the library uh, that I, I'm using. Um, I can put it... Uh, yeah. yeah. So for the... So for the YouTube audience, we're here with Michelle. And how do you say your last name? Dude. 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 Yeah, it's a bit uh, difficult to pronounce in English. <laughs> okay. This young man here is a master of WebGL, and he's helping us on the Open Building Institute with respect to putting our assets into manipulable 3D format that you can actually learn from it. In by walking through the models, manipulating them, getting information about parts, exploding them, and so forth, using fully open source tool chains, which is very exciting from the standpoint of open source ecology. And then we could see that probably people will take this up as we produce instructionals of how to use these entire tool chains to do so. So let's look at well, the. Normally, uh, if you want to make models, 3D models, and uh, texture them like uh, game texturing, UV unwrapping and things like that. Uh, mostly they use uh, 3D Max as a program and um, Cinema 4D. And they're quite expensive. Mm -hmm. They're like a few thousand dollars uh, to, to buy them. Or I think nowadays it's like on a yearly basis you have to pay. Mm. Uh, you don't actually buy them, but uh, it's like um, Unity, the game engine, it's also like $75 a month you have to pay. To Wait a minute. It. Wait a minute. Are you saying that if uh, we use open source software, we're not going to have to pay thousands of dollars a year? Yeah. Yeah, well, well let's uh, see. if you use Blender, who has, uh, where you can do the same, it's, uh, it's, even, uh, it's, uh, it's as good as the other programs, and it's for free. Well, that was a trick question. Okay, but moving on. In the link that you <laughs> that you sent me, what, what do you want me to look at? Well, that's the, the JavaScript library that uh, that I'm using. You have a, a few approaches to uh, it's to make 3D WebGL uh, more accessible. It's uh, you can't you can't program directly in uh, in WebGL. It's it's too difficult uh, for most people. For me also. So we have JavaScript libraries uh, to make stuff in 3D, and the, the site, I, uh, the link I send you, it's like a, a few examples. Uh, but yeah, there's some very fancy things, things, but uh, mostly like uh, eye candy, I call it. You know, yeah. it looks spectacular, but what you, what do you do, you do with it? Huh? Mm -hmm. That's the question. And I've been looking for uh, how to ma make uh, the 3D stuff with a totally open source uh, workflow, like making the 3D assets and uh, only using uh, totally open source code also. Right. Like 3, 3GS, you can use it. Uh, it's it's uh, completely open source and free. There's no license for a commercial use or something. And you can combine it with uh, other uh, libraries. You can uh, like use a, a sort of a physics engine to make, uh, um, you know, to use gravity and things like that. And uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I, well, I send you a link to physics. But let's get very focused on a task at hand, which is, for example, the hydronic panel. What so what so yeah, yeah, what's okay. our process? Okay, okay. Well, uh, in the past, I used uh, Q, uh, QGIS eh, uh, as a geographic program, but it, it, it has a plugin, an exporter, that you can export uh, models in a, a JSON of uh, uh, JavaScript uh, object notation. So you can export uh, a geographic model uh, in a 3D format. Like uh, on my on my side, I made like the, the um, uh, historical thing with the, the fortification of Liège. I don't know if you've seen it. It's like a geographic model with forts on it from uh, that uh, were uh, destroyed in, in the First World War. That's made with the uh, QGIS. 
And then I thought like, yeah, but uh, if I make a sort of a hack, I can make a, a, a fake coordinate file, import it in QGIS and make whatever model I want and make it interactive that way. And I can, can avoid a lot of programming. Uh, so the, the micro house model uh, I made, I made that way. I made the furniture clickable by using QGIS. Uh, it was uh, it was a sort of a workaround, but it's yeah, it's a it's a pretty good workflow. Uh, do, do you get what I uh, what I mean? If you if you go to sure. my site, three uh, D content. Mm -hmm. uh, be. Yep. The first model is a forty forty fortified position of Liège and. That was the first one I made with the uh, QGIS. It's like uh, just a terrain, a 3D terrain with uh, forts in it. Oh, yeah. With icons, the positioning of a whole fortification of a city. Uh, so you can make clickable 3D models with it. And uh, that, uh, that program I used to make a basic framework, a 3D clickable framework. And then I added uh, models that I made with Blender, and Blender has a 3 3GS exporter too, so you can uh, export models in JavaScript notation, object notation out of Blender, and then combine the two, make a, a sort of a mashup. Okay, so you I guys. Yeah, I probably should make a tutorial to to make it a bit uh, accessible. I've been so uh, yeah. I'm not a programmer, uh, and I figured out a way to make interactive 3D models without a lot of programming. Without, yeah, um, that's so. I see the three-dimensional terrain map there. I'm not really sure what to do with the red things. Ah, click on, click on the red things. Click on them. It gives me like icons. Okay, so it gives me information about them? Yeah, then you get a, a ground. Um, normally you should get, if you click on the icons, uh, then a pop-up opens and uh, you get a, a terrain map with a slide, so you can uh, slide the, the concrete structure over it. Does it work? No, show me on your screen, Sh share your screen. Ah, how, it, uh, how do you do it? I go to the upper left hand bar, the, the screen shares the green. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, fortified. You see it now? You have to share your screen, so I'm not seeing your, your screen yet. Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, where? Shit. <laughs> how does it work? Uh, well, I have some some screens here, but I don't see the one I want to share. Hmm. No. Okay, no, click. It's not, uh... Yeah, click on the green button and then click which yeah, screen. Yeah, I, wanna... I got a by the the the, the screen I want to share isn't in the in the list. And maybe just do your entire desktop or expand it. Oh, okay. Uh, sh uh, yeah, Google Hangouts. Ah, okay, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, now, now, do you see it or not? Wait. No, I don't. Okay, yeah, wait, yeah, yeah. There we, there we go. Okay. Uh huh. So, um, if you click one of the the icons, then uh, the pop up opens, and then you get a, an uh, an aerial view of the terrain, mm -hmm. and you can slide over the. Um, concrete structure that's underground. 
different uh, boards. So yeah, it was a way of um, yeah making the terrain uh, clickable and adding extra information. And then you can click through uh, to Google Maps uh, with a 3D view of the terrain. Yeah. So you can u use uh, QGIS to make uh, 3D interactive maps. And then I uh, use it to make this model. I made sort of a, um, a fake uh, coordinate file. I made a ground plane of, uh, of the micro house and then made a, a coordinate file to go along with it, import it in QGIS and made like, a, instead of a geographical model, a house model with furniture in it that's clickable. So we can use it yeah, to uh, make a, a clickable 3D model and then a pop-up uh, opens up and you can, put you can put links in it. And normally it's quite a lot of programming, but if you use QGIS, but then yeah, you have to first learn to, to work with QGIS. Or just basic functionality. It's uh, don't have to learn the complete geographic okay. program. Where's where does WebGL come in in this? Well, actually, um, WebGL is how you're the, displaying this. The, the, the Java script is is to simplify the the, the WebGL. If you uh, WebGL is uh, is like quite complicated. You it's too difficult. Nobody prom programs directly in WebGL. Uh, you use a JavaScript library to make it mo uh, more simple. Um, yeah, that, that way you can reduce the codes uh, enormously. Okay. So where do we go from here? Well, um, now I want to make something similar like this, but uh, the, the new uh, house. For the Open Building Institute, make it um, explo explosion view, and um, making it clickable. The, that all items are clickable, and with uh, with labels. Also, like um, that, you can uh, click the, the structural parts, the insulated walls, and things like that. But also the hydronic system, or uh, yeah, everything, Make, uh, making everything clickable. And can this be embedded into OpenBuildingInstitute.org? Yeah, it should be. Uh, I could put it in a. Can you make it so? So you basically have the whole model. Can you make it such that you can abstract one layer from it, like? Here's the hydronic panel, so you just display that and work with that, so you don't have to go through the entire house. Yeah, yeah. We can. Uh, well, um, like I did with, with um, the framework I send you. Uh, yeah. You have an, uh, yeah. You have the total house, for in, for instance, and then uh, you can click certain icons. And you get a, an element out of the house that you can look at, uh, at in detail, and you can get more information. Uh, yeah, that's what uh, I'm working on. Okay. Okay. Um, so what what do we need to coordinate at this point? Well, I, I would. Um, if you can say like we want this house because you have a lot of models, eh? different models, eh? um, the, the studio, uh, the big house, something in between. Uh, right. I would like to know like exactly we want uh, this house, uh, uh, um, this structure in WebGL, and then um, I can make the hydronic system. Uh, and function of that, like that, it fits into that house specifically, um, and then I can make like separate models. Um, I can make the total house ex uh, explode uh, explosion view, but then uh, also like a detailed view of the hydronic system. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I have to have like one model of a house that I'm working on. 
I can make all the different houses uh, now in, in a few weeks. That, that won't be, uh... Okay, look at this one. So that's the features. So that's the thing. I think the the one we want is this. Probably this this simple one because the other one that's going to be. So seed home and expandable starter home. Let's see if I can get Katarina on a box here. Like the, the basic house, the, the studio, or... Uh... Sorry, uh, sorry, so bringing Katarina over and so let's discuss some of the details. I'll cut the video off. Um, but yeah, here's the, the house itself. So I'm gonna cut the video.